boys back with another video today we are going to be doing a tier list now this is going to be mainly just an overall tier list not really specific down to anything really so this is going to be all around you know all together solo shuffle maybe arena as well but uh, let's start off this video and let's get into it if you haven't already make sure you like comment and subscribe if you haven't already but otherwise let's get on to the video here now we're going to be starting off with no tanks. I don't really do tanks anymore. It's not really BFA. Um, I'd say Blood Decay is the best tank right now. Um, so if you're looking to play a tank, the only viable choice you would have is to play Blood Decay. And I'd honestly say Blood Decay is probably B tier. Um, eh, probably not. Uh, yeah, I'd say it's B tier. Eh, no. It's good, but at the same time, just play Unholy, bro. Come on now. Unless you're trying to get like rank one as a tank i would go with blood dk but otherwise you know i wouldn't mess with it to be honest i think just getting ads is pretty uh pathetic in my uh, in my state of mind but um that's pretty much that let's get all the tanks out of the way here so we're going to be starting off with what do we want to start off warlock warlock's been a very insane class lately i think warlock is a hundred percent an s tier uh class you compare it with an SP, you compare it with an Assassination Rogue. Um, its overall damage is insane. And Solo Shovel, insane. If you let this class free cast, even for a few seconds, your entire team is dead. Definitely a god tier spec right now. Um, but definitely the best out of all three specs of... Uh, probably the best caster spec in the entire game right now. Other than maybe like a Dev Evoker or an MM. But I'd say they're still right next to each other. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much that. Destro Lock is probably an A tier class, maybe a B tier. Um, mainly, it just, it has, it does, it has a lot of potential and it does a lot of burst damage, but you have to really know what you're doing. Um, without getting bolts off, you're not going to be doing any damage and it's not even going to be worth your time. So, that's pretty much that. I might switch this later depending on, you know, what we got in the, uh, section here, but we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. And Demo Lock's going to also be an A-tier class. Overall, really good damage, really good control, a lot of CC. Uh, all lock specs are viable, 100%, and very good. So that's pretty much that. Warrior spec is going to be A-tier. Um, Arms isn't really doing that good. And the only reason it's always viable is because of MS. Now, if you pair this with a Rep Paladin, um, it'll do very well. You can pair it with a DK. You can pair it with a DH. You can just pair it with a bunch of things, and it can work out. But again, it's not going to be as good. Again, the A tier list is going to be kind of weird because the S tier are just so strong that they it like as an A tier, this isn't even that bad. The problem is that the S tier is so strong that it just it it's like an entire two lists above. If I had another list, these would then there would be certain classes up here. But um, I'm kind of trying to explain it why I'm putting it there. Fear Warrior, obviously an A tier class. Um, overall, you have a lot of pressure, and you're pretty much kind of like a. Um, you're kind of like a DH, probably a worse version of a DH, and the main reason is your cooldowns are kind of just bad. Um, you kind of just you're in rate your your CDs are just kind of useless. You can't stop them from doing damage to you, and then you just take unhealable damage, like. If you if you once your trinkets done and your walls done, you can probably die faster, like as fast as a rogue or like a clothy would. It's pretty insane how fast a fury warrior can die compared to like everything else. But yeah, that's pretty much that. They would need their wall, honestly. They need a one minute wall, like that's what they would need to make this viable or just make them more tankier. But they're just they're too they're kind of like a pharaoh dur without like with survival instincts like. That's just not enough. They don't have a bear form. They don't have healing. It's just overall not the very best. I can honestly put this as B tier, honestly. Uh, thing is, Fear Warrior, I think, is very good. I think the damage on it is insanely good. And But the thing is, I don't think it's really... I'm trying to think here. Um, I'm going to put it as A tier for now. I might put it at B tier. I just think the only issue with this class is it dies. Like, it really does die, and that's the problem with this class. As a warrior, you, you, you need to be tanky, um, but uh, yeah, that's that's the opposite, so that's pretty much that. Feral Druid, 
it's going to be an A tier spec, maybe a B tier. Actually, what we're going to do is we'll do this. So, Feral Druid's insanely good. Actually, eh, do I, the thing is, I like Feral Druid. Like, I've seen Feral Druid with a mage, and it's insane. Like, Feral Druid mage, Feral Druid SP, Feral Druid Desperate Lock, all can be very nice. Feral Druid is pretty good until you put it up against a solo shuffle lobby. You just have to know how to play it. It's kind of like Sub Rogue. But it has burst damage. It has a lot of burst damage. It's kind of like a sub rogue that does damage, and it has like a lot of a lot more like consistency with its CC. Like after Seb and blind on a rogue, you're pretty much just kinning for all CC. But as a feral druid, you have stun, stun. You know you can clone targets. You can clone the main target when they pop a defensive, or you know there's just a lot of things that you can do as a feral, which is it makes it viable. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much that. These might be switched. Who knows? We'll see. Boomy is going to be an A tier class. Um, overall, it's pretty good. It has good damage. Obviously, it has CC. The one problem with Feral or with Boomy is the same thing with all these classes mainly, or at least with these four. Um, they just die. Like as a Boomy right now, you literally come out of bear form and you're almost dead in two globals. You by the time you get precog, you're already dead. Like I play my Boomy, I've come out of form to try to do some damage, and by the time I pop my burst, I'm literally dead before I can even get my rotation off. So, Boomy is just, it, again, it's just, there's too much damage going out to where it's like, my healer, literally, I, I, I have to just pair form and run. Like, I, I can't just tank damage, and every, and that's pretty much the entire game where I'm just getting trained. So, uh, Boomy is pretty uh, mid. Frost DK is actually going to be a B tier class. Uh, relies way too much on burst damage. Again, classes that rely a lot on burst damage are going to be really bad this season. So, like, Sub Rogue. Um, Enhancement Shaman, stuff like that. Windwalker. I mean, I think Windwalker is actually pretty solid, but stuff like that is going to be a B tier class. So DK has really good burst, and if you play it really well, you can make it work. But overall, Unholy is going to be ten times better for you, and it's in yeah, no. So that's pretty much that. Unholy DK, I think it's honestly, I think he can be an S tier class. I honestly, that's what I'm thinking. Um, DK overall damage is insane. Um, your setups are insane. You can put it with a DH. You can put it with a Windwalker. You can put it with a Demo Lock. You can put it with pretty much almost anything. You like an Evoker, an Assassination Rogue, all like pretty much everything. Almost everything can be put with a DK. And on top of that, they're doing a insane amount of damage. They have an insane amount of pressure. They have a lot of utility for their team, especially since they counter casters a lot of the time. So. Um, having one of these on your team is going to be crucial to beating casters and overall having really good setups. Almost every comp has a DK in it. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm going to put it as S tier. It could be an A tier, but I honestly don't. I think it's an S tier class. So, that's pretty much it. We're going to go with Windwalker. Windwalker is going to be a, an A tier class. Um, obviously, it, it has an insane amount of burst damage, but it really does just die. And after its burst damage, it's just not really good. Um, it relies too much on its burst, and if you just CC the Windwalker on his CDs, he's pretty much just going to be useless the entire rest of the game until he bursts again. And again, classes that rely off a of burst that don't have an insane amount of CC are not going to be good. So it's, if it was like Feral Druid and it had a clone, then it would be good, but it just it says not. So um, it's still good, has really insane damage, but I wouldn't say it's an S tier or nothing. So now to the next class here, or well, Miss Weaver. Miss Weaver is going to be an A tier class. I would put it as S tier, but I don't think it really deserves to be an S tier. I think there's probably going to be a few B tier healers. I think Holy Priest and H Power are going to be a B tier, and then Miss Weaver and Resta Sh maybe Resta Shaw might be a B tier too. I think there's only I think there's only a few viable viable healers right now in the game. I think everything else is just pretty garbage. Actually. Eh, yeah, yeah, no. Nah. I feel like high-rated games right now, or just overall, even the solo shuffle, it's just I've I've literally played these classes and they've just felt terrible. Like they they need a buff insanely bad. I don't know. We'll see where we put these at, but I think Miss Weaver's A tier. I don't think it's as good as Presivoke or Wrestledruid or Discrease, but it's definitely up there. It's definitely like the fourth healer in the list, like in the row. So now we're gonna go with Druid Wrestledruid S tier class. Now the reason. This is going to be the secondary best class in the game for healing is because Prez Evoker and all Evokers counter Rusted Rude. So, 
Um, this would be the best healer class in the game if Prez Evoker wasn't the meta. Or if just Evoker in general wasn't the meta. So Resident insanely good, insanely amount of CC, insanely amount of healing. Um, when you're in tree form, your rats are going to hit for about 150 to 200k per pop. So if you just imagine the amount of damage and about 10 casts of wrath, you're getting a, a lot of damage off. A lot. So yeah, it's pretty much rest of dude. And that's pretty much that. Now we're going to go with Prez Evoker. Prez Evoker, S tier class. Um, insanely good healing. Obviously, it's going to counter rest of dude. And that's pretty much that. Dev Evoker, S tier class. Obviously, I think we all know uh, Dev Evoker is literally just after your burst. It's a one. It's literally you're spamming one button and you're literally just killing everybody during your CDs and even off your CDs. You're just doing an insane amount of damage. And then on top of that, with the amount of purges that you're going to be getting, it's just, it's an insane amount of it just pre Evoker right now is just insane. And then Aug Evoker is pretty garbage. I'd put it as B tier. Actually, I put it. Yeah, I'd be too. I think it's Frost DK level of bad. Overall, the damage isn't... I mean, the damage is pretty bad, but it's not as tanky as it was. I just think overall it sucks. I mean, it's meant to be a support class, so it's not really meant to do that much damage. But when you make a class like this, it's just not going to really... It's kind of like a tank... It's kind of like Prop Paladin and BFA. That's pretty much the way they tried to make this. And then they tried to make it into a Dev Voger, and then it was too broken, so it was like they just... Forgot about the class, pretty much. So that's pretty much how that is. BM is going to be an A tier class. Uh, overall, you're getting an insane amount of damage and pretty much a, a lot of consistency. You're pretty much having your burst out the entire game. It's not as good as MM, but it's definitely, it definitely valid. It definitely has its spot, and that's pretty much that. MM Hunter is going to be an S tier class. Overall, your burst that you're getting is an insane amount of burst. 500, 600k aim shots. On top of your explosive shots, on top of your CC, just an insane amount of damage in an insane amount of time. It's kind of like a sub rogue, except just way better. So that's pretty much that. Survival Hunter is going to be pretty garbage right now, so I'm going to put it as B tier. Um, it just it doesn't really get to see the sunlight much. It's not really good. You might be able to pair it with a DK and make something work out of it. Maybe like something. I just don't think it's worth it. Um, Maybe you could do jungle with it, but it's just going to be a worse version of BM or MM, so not really a viable or good spec to play. And that's pretty much that. Enhancement Shaman is going to be pretty garbage right now. Enhancement Shamans is a class that is really only good when it one-shots. That's it. It's kind of like Sub Rogue. When it doesn't one-shot, it's not going to be good. It's just they have a, they have a bad way of tuning these classes. When, when you base a class around burst, people just get annoyed. Because when you base a class around burst, that class has to do an insane amount of damage. The problem is when, is when that class does damage off of its burst. So let's say like a, a Fury Warrior doesn't deserves to do a damage 24-7. A, a um, Boomy deserves to do damage 24-7. A BM deserves to do 20. These are PvE classes. But an Enhancement Shaman and Survival and Frost DK, a lot of these classes are set up classes. And on top of that, they also require a, a, a lot of burst. So, they just don't end up doing well in a bracket full of PvE. So, that's pretty much, hopefully that explains it enough for you. Rhett Paladin. Let's, let me think where I want to put Rhett here, ladies and gentlemen. I don't, I think Rhett is an S tier class, I'm not going to lie. I think Rhett's pretty insane. I think if you play Rhett well, it's definitely an S tier class. The CC that you're getting, the burst that you're, you're getting, everything you need for your team to win the game. Um, I'm trying to think here. I think it's honestly pretty insane. I honestly do. I think it's really good. Uh, the only time I think Rhett is bad is when you pair it with an H Pal, and that's just that's just how it goes. Sometimes it, you, you just get a bad comp and you lose. But I think overall, I think Rhett Paladin is pretty good. I think you have everything. You have Sank. You have Sack. One minute Sack. You have literally Hodge every DR, which is perfect CC alignment. You have a lot of burst damage. You're kind of like a Feral Druid, just with a lot more cooldowns. Obviously, versus double caster, you're going to have a trouble, but again, that's just how the class goes. Some classes just have struggle versus certain classes, but overall, I think it's Red's insane right now. But you guys can decide what you guys think about that. Outlaw or h pal? So h pal is a weird spec right now. I'm trying to think where I want to put it. I don't think Miss Weaver deserves being the... I feel like these 
Mm, let me think. I'm trying to think here. I'm thinking. So I think right now, currently, I'd say this is probably where this is going to go. So these are the three specs where I'm going to put it. So h Pal, Rasta Shaman are kind of just bad right now. Um, at least Holy Priest and Mistweaver, they get healing. I think Holy Priest beats everything but the meta classes. So h Priest, I think, can beat Mistweaver, but I don't think it can beat these like the, the two healers up here. May and I honestly don't even think it can beat Mistweaver. I just think with no damage reduction spells, it's terrible. And then with h Pal, your overall heal... Like, again, a class that relies on your burst to do healing is going to be bad. So, um, you know, with your wings, with all your buttons up, you do insane amount of healing. But then afterwards, you're literally just sitting there and you're dead. Your team's dead. You, you don't have any amount of AoE healing. You don't have any... It's just not really a fun class to play. And that's... I mean, it's a fun class to play. It's just it's not good. Same thing with Lester Shaman. It, it's just these classes are so much better that there's just no point. It's not even a competition for them. So I wouldn't advise playing these two. Obviously, these two are still playable, but you're just going to lose to these two. And then Holy Priest loses to Disc Priest. And, you know, again, just play the S-tier healers. Don't go for the, any, any other healer. Just play what's S-tier and you'll win games. That's how the game works. If you play these other classes, you're going to have a hard time. And that's just how it goes. Disc Priest is going to be an S-tier class. Overall, you have everything possible. You have damage, utility. You have a lot of cooldowns for your teammates. And you pretty much will beat everything but the S tier classes. So, Prez Evoker, Wrestledruid will beat Disc Priest, but Disc Priest beats everything else. So, if you're looking to play a healer, this is your three options that you got. If you're trying to get high rated or just in general, these are going to be your go to classes. These work with very well with a lot of other classes, and they have a lot of damage reduction spells, they have a lot of healing, and they have a lot of pressure so they can help their team out. But that's pretty much how I feel about the healers. Um, let's go with SP here. SP, I think, is an A-tier class. I think overall, put an SP with an uh, with an uh, Affy lock or just a death roll or just a lock in general, or put it with a Pharaoh Druid or really uh, anything that works with the comp or just overall. I think SP is just insane. I think it needs a little bit more, maybe. I think its damage is a little mini mediocre. I think. Again, same thing with Ellie. They kind of need to be put in the same category as Aphilog. If Like, they kind of made it into an Aphilog, just a worse version. So, it has utility, has damage, has pretty much everything you want. But the problem with SP is, again, the same problem that there's always been. Once there's two melees on you, you're dead. You're, there's nothing you can do. Because this requires casting. SP requires you to get your bleeds off. At least as an Affy, if you get your bleeds off, you kill their entire team and they can't dispel it. As an SP... You're just getting your stuff dispelled off CD, and there's no really, you know, effect to you getting your stuff dispelled compared to, like, an Affy log. So, that's pretty much how I feel about SP. Ellie, I think it's terrible right now. I think it's probably one of the worst casters in the game right now, so I'd say it's a P-tier. For some reason, uh, it used to be really good. I don't know if it got nerfed, but when I played Ellie, I, or when I was playing with an Ellie, I saw them doing, like, 250. They were doing, like, a 200k DPS flat on their, on their burst, like, on their damage. Like, not even on the burst, just overall, they were doing, like, 175 to 200k damage. And if they dispelled, they got hit for, like, 350k on their thing, which is a huge reduction of HP. And then all of a sudden, when I'm when I'm watching Ellie's, they barely can peak, like, 130k. And that's just not going to work for a caster like this. And then on top of that, they're getting their stuff dispelled. Like, everything has an AoE dispel, so all they're doing is they're dispelling everybody. And then you have to, you're, all you're doing is reapplying your flame shocks. And then you're gaining no procs because you're so busy on trying to reapply your flame shock that you're literally just never getting to play your class how it's supposed to be played. So I think it's terrible. I wouldn't advise it. I haven't even seen an Ellie lock in anything. So uh, that should tell you enough. So that's pretty much how I feel about that. Arcane, I think, is actually pretty good, actually, right now. I think it's actually very well. I've seen a lot of Arcanes, and between Frost Mage and Arcane, I think, Ar I think Frost is probably better just because of the amount of you i don't know i think honestly arcane's very good i literally play with an arcane mage they do a lot of bursts if you put an arcane with a feral dude or an arcane with like a rogue or something i think overall it's not a bad spec right now surprisingly i thought arcane was trash but then i started facing some and i was like okay these guys are actually pretty strong um, you guys tell me know what you guys think about that but i think they're actually not that bad i think they need a little bit of a damage buff because I don't think they're as good as an SP. 
or like the other A tier classes that are cast like a Destro Lock. I don't think it's as good as Destro or Demo. But I do think it's definitely it has its spot and it, it can win games. It's not like it's unplayable like these classes. Frost Mage here, I think is an A tier class. I think overall Frost Mage. Um again the same thing. For some reason, I used to see Frost Mages doing a uh, an insane amount of damage and then all of a sudden when I get a Frost Mage in my lobby, they're literally just doing no damage. I don't know if it's just them. But every Frost Mage that I face, I've never, like, they used to be top in charge, and now they're barely able to, like, compete. So I don't know if all of a sudden they just, like, they just suck. But it's kind of like an Ellie Shaman. I don't know. I, I really don't keep up with the with the nerfs and stuff, so I don't know what gets nerfed or what gets buffed. All I, I just see how it, they uh, do in game, and this is doing not as good. I think survivability is god tier. I think it's damage. It's on its burst is god tier. But I think overall, it's a PvE class, and it needs to have damage 24-7 to actually work. But who knows? DH is going to be an S-tier class. We all kind of know this. DH has been the class that's... It can work with almost anything. DH Boomy, DH uh, DK, obviously. DH um, Rhett can work out. Really, DH anything. You just put DH with anything. DH Ellie used to be really good until Ellie got nerfed, obviously. But uh, yeah, that's where I'm going to be putting that. Outlaw Rogues, B-tier class. We all kind of know that. We've never seen an Outlaw Rogue the entire season. Uh, overall, its damage is unbelievably bad. You have the CC, but it's kind of like Sub Rogue. The damage is just unirrelevantly bad. Sub Rogue is going to be a B-tier class. Um, Sub Rogue is just a class, again, that's just... It's too reliant on burst, and it sucks to see a all the setup classes like this are just terrible. And as you can see, the top classes in the game, and just the overall amount, is just a PvE fest. This is what this season is. Or this expansion has just been PvE. And it's, it sucks to see, but it is what it is. Assassination Rogue. Now, this is kind of a confusing one. I think Assassination Rogue is an A-tier class. But when you put it with any, when you put it with uh, other classes, it can be an S-tier class. If you put a Rogue with an a DK or a Rogue with an Affy, which is the best comp that you can play with a Rogue, I think it's an S-tier. I think it's very well, but I don't think it's the overall class. It, I don't think it's because of Rogue that it's broken. I think it's just because it, the comp works really good. So I think Assassination Rogue, I think what we'll do is I'll put Assass at A tier because I, I do not think Assass is S tier. I think if it had a little bit more, it would be S tier. I think honestly, it, I think its burst is very well, but its, its overall damage is terrible. Like, I've queued into twos and stuff. And on my burst, it feels great, but the moment my burst is done, I'm it just feels so bad. Like, I feel like I can't kill anything without my burst. Like, I'm literally just sitting there trying to whack them, and they're just, they're not, nothing's dying. I multi-blade, you can bleed everybody, you can do kidney setups, and they just, it doesn't feel, like, until super high dampening, you don't even have a chance of killing anything unless you kill them during your burst. So, uh, I really don't feel like it deserves an S tier spot. It's not like these other classes that literally just straight PvE and kill everything. So I'm going to switch around a little bit because I think SS is way better than a lot of these classes. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to switch a little bit around here. Just a, ti just a tiny bit so we don't, because I know a lot of people are going to be like kind of uh, salty about that. Because I, I really, I mean, I play SS. I, I mean, I kind of play everything. So I kind of know what's what's good and what's not. I think Assassination is good. I just don't think it's an S tier level yet. I think if it had a little bit more consistency on its damage and wasn't carried by an Affy or a DK, I think it's Ur or Evoker. I think it's one of the it, it's insane. But if it if it just had a if it had like a five percent buff, it would be an S tier class. That's all it would need. So it's not it's not very far away from an S tier class. So I'm trying to move around here before we end the video. I want to see um, Frost Mage. I think is still good though. I don't feel like Frost Mage. I think this is what we're going to Hmm. I'm trying to thank you. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. I think Arcane is very good, but I don't think it does I don't think it's an A tier honestly. I feel like this is how this is like the perfect list that I'm going to do. I think this is this looks good. This looks better. Cuz I don't think Arcane can compete with an SP. I don't think Arcane can compete with a Frost Mage. I don't think Arcane can compete with a Boomy or a D like I don't think it can, like it needs to be able to compete with the other classes to be in the same tier. And it can't. It, as Arcane it can compete with all of these other classes though. It just can't compete with these. These are like almost the top. These are one this is like a 5% buff away from being god tier. 
or like uh, uh, like being top dogs. Maybe not Arms Warrior. Maybe Arms Warrior would need like a 10% buff because they're all based around Burst. And again, Burst classes aren't going to do very well. But I think with just with his MS alone, it's very good. And do I want to put Holy Priest at B tier? I think this might look better. I, I, don't, I honestly think 8 Pound and Holy Priest are just terribly badly designed. I think this has no damage reduction, so this is going to get flat out because this can't compete. So that's pretty much how that's going to be. Let me know what you guys think about this video, and I'll uh, see you guys in the next one. Otherwise, Fire Mage is obviously going to be a B tier class. Peace, peace.